I am getting ready to paint my Keurig pink. My mom gave me this a few weeks ago and although I love it, I do not like the color of it. So we are going to paint this and this is pretty easy. Um, it probably takes less than 20 minutes. So if you wanna try this at home, there are plenty of videos on how to do this, but each Keurig is made differently. So probably have to go through a bunch of them. But if you have this one, like me, and this is a Keurig 2.0, then you have stumbled across the right video. So we are first going to remove the water basin back here. And then I'm gonna use some painter's tape to tape off all the parts of the Keurig that I don't wanna get paint on. So like the handle, the screen, the button. And then when I lift the water basin off, there is a part where the filter goes that I want to tape off too. So we are gonna start there. And then after that, we are going to go outside and paint. So I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see me tape everything off. Okay, so like I said, you have to first remove the water basin, which is this part right here. So I'm going to lift this off of here. And then this part down here is the part you wanna cover up. And then I'm probably gonna cover this part too. I feel like this hole feeds into the water basin. So I'm gonna cover that and that. And then I'm gonna also tape off all of the handles. And so yeah, we are going to get started. Now I'm gonna use this box cutter slash razor. You can use an X-Acto knife if that's what you have. But I'm gonna go through and just kind of like cut around some parts where the tape was like too much. So I'm just cutting off the excess tape. So I'm gonna go around the button and then I am also gonna go around the screen here and just try to get it as perfect as possible. If you do get a little bit of spray paint on anything that's not supposed to have paint on it, you can use a Q-tip and a little bit of nail polish remover to um, kind of touch it up and clean up your mistakes, but hopefully, you don't have to, but if you do, you can do that. Okay. I do believe this is good. So we are going to take this outside now and we are going to spray paint it. I'm excited. So let's just wipe it off one more time. To make sure we have all the dirt off so that the spray paint is nice and smooth. We are ready to head outside. So I will be back once we get ready to spray paint. Okay, so we have made it outside and I'm getting ready to paint and I will be using Rust-Oleum. And this is the candy pink color, and it is gloss. I spray painted my KitchenAid mixer last night with a matte color, and I absolutely hated how it came out. 
and I was actually gonna do this in the same matte pink, but because I didn't like that, I ran back to the store and I picked up the gloss. Um, so that is what I'm using. Another spray paint that I would suggest, which is great, is Penty Plus, but Penty Plus costs a little bit more. Um, and also, I don't think I saw any of that in Walmart. So those are two spray paints that I highly suggest, Rust-Oleum and Penty Plus. So, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get started. A tip with spray paint, don't ever just start spraying. You wanna shake it and then you wanna spray out into the air first because usually the first two sprays are gonna come out really clumpy and if you get those clumps onto your surface, it's just gonna be a mess to have to clean up. So just spray it a little bit first. Also, make sure you wear a mask. Um, because you want to keep your lungs for a long time. All right, let's start. Another thing with spray painting, never spray paint up close on the surface. That is how you create drips. Spray paint, from at least, I would say, two feet back. Cause drips when you spray painting are such a hassle and a nuisance to try to correct. There's actually no way that you really can correct drips. Um, you just have to deal with the fact that you have a big drip on whatever it is that you're spray painting. Hopefully you get it on the back if you do get them and not on the front of whatever it is. So spray paint from a distance and do not hold the spray paint in one spot for a long time. You wanna keep constantly moving to make sure that the spray paint is evenly um, getting sprayed throughout and not just too much in one area because that will certainly cause a big drip and you don't want that. All right. I look really, oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, I look really crazy with this on, but um, so I think that's a good first coat. I'm gonna let this sit for maybe about 20 minutes, maybe 10, 10 to 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna come back out here and do a second coat. Um, So we will be back when this dries in just a little bit. I'm also gonna link this in the description. If you plan to do a lot of spray painting projects, you need one of these, especially if you have asthma. Honestly, everybody needs this, but I do have asthma, so it's even more important for me to have something like this. It just protects you. It protects your lungs. Um, it stops you from inhaling all those fumes. So you definitely need one of these if you plan on doing a lot of spray painting projects. And I think it's like $20. So I will link this, it is on Amazon. And yeah, I just wanted to say that. All right, I think we are done. I went ahead and added a second coat. And then I also put a top coat of this clear gloss, gloss on just to seal it and for some extra protection. So we are gonna go ahead and we are going to take this inside, remove the tape and see what we have. All right, so we have made it back inside. It is dry. So we're gonna go ahead and take off all of the painter's tape and then we'll be done now like i said if any paint like got on the screen or on the button i'll go through with like a q-tip and some what's it called nail polish remover and touch it up but hopefully i don't have to this part is still outside drying i missed a piece so i might have to go back out and get that in a few minutes and then I will show the finished product 
I lost the nail in the process of this and you're so cute but um anyways yeah we're gonna speed through this part because I'm sure you don't want to sit here through another five minutes of me unwrapping it so I'll be right back all right so this is the final product there were some imperfections so i did have to grab some of the nail polish remover and a q-tip to kind of go around and um touch it up a little bit i know in some videos here i have watched a few other videos of people do this to their curate but they don't really show you the imperfections afterwards so i'm gonna show you um so this is not necessarily an imperfection but if you do this and you're like but what about the inside i do just want to show you so there are still some blue parts left but that's totally fine in my opinion because you're never going to see this also i don't want to get that close to the inside anyways with the paint because that is the part where the copy is being made so i personally would not worry about it um another area that was a little bit challenging was the push button here so you can kind of see where i kind of scuffed it up a little bit but that was because i was trying to get around the ring to clean up the paint so a tip if you do get paint around the outer ring and it's kind of hard for you to clean it up with the nail polish remover what i did was i grabbed a black sharpie and I wrote or drew around the edges to kind of cover up that paint that I could not get out. And that's how I ended up scuffing that up. So I might go back and touch up the paint just a little bit, or I might just leave it. So if you do this and you're like, oh my goodness, it's so hard to get the button, well, the paint around the button perfect, you're not gonna get it perfect. So don't feel bad. And like I said, you can use a Sharpie or some type of permanent black marker to just kind of paint over the paint that you can't get off. So, um, yeah. And then the back side, I am not going to worry about this at all. As a matter of fact, I actually did that on purpose. The basin is going to sit here, so it truly just does not matter. But, um yeah i just wanted to point out those things um i did have to clean up around here um but other than that oh almost knocked my tripod over i think it came out pretty good it's a diy project and diy is not supposed to be perfect it is handmade it did not come this way so of course there will be some imperfections but um i'm satisfied now i'm going to go make a cup of coffee so i just finished making a cup of coffee in my new pink keurig it looks so nice on my countertop um it actually looks like it came this way it does not look like i painted this it looks like it literally came out of the box as well you have to get super close to notice that it's painted so this was super easy I am in love with it. I hope that you are inspired and that you will paint your Keurig if that's something that you've been wanting to do. And if you do do it, I would love to see it. Find me on Instagram at I am Bianca Octavia and tag me or DM it to me so I can see it. And I'm going to do a better job at creating longer format videos like this. I do a lot of reels and shorts, but not really detailed videos like this. So subscribe for more i sound like a youtuber i always hate when i sound like that but subscribe and i'm gonna give you a sneak peek before i go of my kitchen aid mixer that i also just spray painted it's so pretty so i did not do a long format video for this one I just did a reel, but it's literally the same concept as the carry. You just take off all the pieces that you don't want to have spray paint on, which is basically just all the silver parts. Um, and then you spray paint it. So this is my matching set. I love it. And I'm thinking about maybe putting like a logo or something up here. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We'll see.
we'll see but we'll circle back to this <laughs> for now that is it i am out i'm going to grab my coffee and i'm going to go call my mom back and i will be back with another video bye y'all